The problem is the pronunciation where it becomes quite confusing. How do you pronounce the word? Hi there, Steve Coffin here. And today I'm going to do a video about English, about English spelling, spelling and pronunciation. Remember, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. And if you follow me on a podcast service, please leave a comment. I do appreciate it. Okay. So most of my videos here are about learning other languages because I'm in the position of an English speaker learning other languages. So I give advice to people who are learning other languages. Although I am aware that many of my uh, subscribers and viewers are people who are learning English and they find it interesting to listen to what I have to say because it helps them with their English. So today I'm going to talk a bit about English spelling and English pronunciation. So I gave it some thought. Well, first of all, I created a text, a text where I sort of combined all of the inconsistencies of English spelling in, in a bit, not all, a number, a few of the inconsistencies in English spelling and put them into a lesson at link. And I'm going to show you how I would use that lesson to tag some of these words in order to focus in on how very often the same vowel or the same word is pronounced in, or the same letter rather is pronounced in different ways in English and how there seems to be an absence of any clear pattern. I mean, there are some rules, but it's a bit confusing. But first, so I gave some thought to this whole issue of pronunciation. When I look at languages that I have learned, okay, I've learned Chinese. There's a bit of a hint as to the pronunciation, but you essentially have to learn each character as an individual character. You have to learn how it's pronounced. You have to learn the tone of that character although you acquire a lot of that naturally, but it's very difficult. You can't necessarily deduce from the character how that is pronounced, what tone it is. It's not obvious. You actually have to know the word. And then I go to say Greek and uh, Persian Arabic, where there is also inconsistency between the writing system and how things are pronounced. I also found that in many cases I had to know the word before I could confidently pronounce it in the number of languages, Russian, English, another example, you don't know where the emphasis or how the word, the intonation of the word, if you don't know the word, there are other languages like Polish or Spanish, which are very consistent. Uh, the spelling, uh, the intonation matches up to the spelling the, you know what the intonation is. Uh, there are, you know, diacritics to help you. So some languages are easier that way. English is not that easy. So in a way, my basic advice is to disconnect the writing, the spelling from the pronunciation. So if we're only dealing with the issue of spelling, like you're only writing, you're not worried about how words are pronounced, still the sound of the word, the pronunciation, pronunciation comes into, uh, into play because you hear the word in your brain and you're not quite sure how it's spelled because of the inconsistency of English spelling. If there were no sound there, you would just take each word as a separate word, like a Chinese character. And you would just know the word believe meaning to believe, uh, is I E I before E. Whereas receive is E I, you would just learn that as the word, you wouldn't be fooled by the fact that it's the same sound, uh, that the word need and in other words to need dough is K N E A D. Whereas to need something is N E E D. It's confusing. But if you separated out the sound, you didn't worry about the sound. You just remembered that word as a word. That's how you spell it. The spelling on its own, I think would be an easier problem. The problem is the pronunciation where it becomes quite confusing. How do you pronounce the word? And in the end, and I've seen so many people because the way the value of letters in our own language, are so, it's so hardwired. There's this tremendous tendency to pronounce words in English based on how they would be pronounced if they were Spanish words or, you know, Polish words. So I've often mentioned that my father who lived in Canada for, you know, 30 years, he continued to say Nova Scotia instead of Nova Scotia. He would say word instead of word even though he had a phenomenal vocabulary in English was completely fluent in English, but the, the value of those letters in his original Czech language was such that he couldn't let go. Uh, I had, we had a Spanish person working with us 
And she kept on saying sword. And I'd say, no, no, it's sword. Oh yeah, okay, sword. Like people can't let go of the value of those letters in their native language. So and I think one has to kind of divorce. Don't worry about the letters because you're going to want to pronounce them the way they are pronounced in your native language. You have to totally rely on what you hear. So let me just read this text that I wrote and which I put in as a lesson in link. And I'll show you how in that lesson, I go in and I tag words that might give me trouble for pronunciation so that I can then review them uh, in a group uh, in, in the vocab section. But first I'll read you this lesson for those of you who are learning English. And you'll see that I start with A's and I work my way through E, O, it's, in fact, I may not read the whole thing. You can do the lesson. But I say, beware of English spelling. I want to warn, warn, okay, I want to warn all of you about variations in pronunciation in English. After all, you see how the A is pronounced so differently. After all, maybe if you are aware of these changes, you may not make so many mistakes. The hard part is that I can warn you, scare you, prepare you, and what happens? You see how the A is pronounced differently each time. I won't read through the whole thing. You can go and find it if you're interested. But I mean, even like the letter E, we have a letter, 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 E. Those are all E's. Then you have, you know, uh, herd, there's an E. But then you can get the er sound with bird or word or squirrel, um, you know, or, uh, you know, E and A, E and A together can be pronounced like here, but also like bread or head, uh, and so on. Like, so, so you'll see this lesson. I've recorded it. I put it into uh, our library at link, uh, just to illustrate how inconsistent, uh, you know, there's very famous, of course, everyone always refers to the whole uh, OU situation where, you know, you have, um, so I say here, uh, you wouldn't be able to get out OU to travel about without going through the door. Although I've heard of people going through the window that could be tougher or even rougher, blah, blah, blah. And then look out the window. You see a man plowing with his plow. Plow is the same as rough, same spelling, sowing the field while his wife is at home sowing. So he's sowing the field OW, his wife is sewing SEW, his shirt at home, and so forth and so on. Okay, so I will show you how, how I would use this lesson to work on my English spelling. The lesson is an attempt to show how certain letters can be pronounced in very different ways and it's very difficult sometimes to tell how they are pronounced. So I start with a little, with the letter A. So it says, beware of English spelling. I want to, I want to warn you about variations in pronunciation. So we see here that in this first paragraph, I have a lot of words with the letter A all pronounced differently. So I might decide that I want to save the word warn. Uh, so I might even know what the meaning is but I want to be able to, so I save it and then I decide that I want to tag it. So I'll tag it and I'll create, call it, let's see, pronunciation. So that now all of the words, because it's not just the letter A, I'm going to go through this lesson and you'll see that I uh, do the same for other letters. So variation, maybe I feel okay, A in variation, I don't have trouble pronouncing, so I won't go for that. Uh, but again, aware, you know, here's another one. Uh, so I'll save it and I'll give it a tag and I'll call it again. And as I start, you know, uh, typing in the word, pronunciation is there. So I save that as the um, tag for that. All right, so changes, you know, A, A is pronounced changes, mistakes. I'm not so concerned with that. Scare, warn, aware, scare, 
maybe I also want to give that a tag. So I, you know, save it and then I give it a tag. And again, I go pronunciation. Okay. And I save that. So, and patterns, probably I'm not so worried about beware, careful patterns. Okay. Now, then we go to E here. So believe I E believe some people might be confused. So I would go in there and then I would tag it and I would again go PR and that gives me pronunciation. And uh, so that's saved. And of course, letter believe letter me. Um, and so letter can be a, it can be letter, a. Uh, um, so I say seeing is believing. I think by this time, believe probably I'm not going to save that, but heard it has an E in it and it's pronounced er. So I might save that. And then I go in there and I say, let's tag it for pronunciation. And uh, I tag it that way. And uh, you can go through the whole lesson, uh, heard bird heard. I go through, uh, whoops. Okay. Uh, you know, wood, although plow, need, dough, bread instead of herd. So lots of examples of the inconsistency of English spelling. And what I'm trying to show you is that you can, uh, if I go to my vocabulary section now and I choose to filter by, uh, pronunciation, then I'm going to see all the words that I have saved for pronunciation. So there only happen to be four. And so I could use the vocabulary section as a way of trying to focus in on words that I have difficulty pronouncing. So I hope this is uh, helpful to you. I hope uh, even that the lesson, uh, helps you work on your English pronunciation. If you have any suggestions on similar types of uh, lessons that uh, we could create in different languages. Um, please let me know. Go and do the lesson. If you are learning English, if you're having trouble with spelling and if you find this useful, again, I just did this on a, on a whim. Uh, let me know if this helps. Uh, I've made a similar lesson in French, uh, as you know, so if this is useful, I can go and create lessons in different languages, which focus in on some of the aspects that people have trouble with. And uh, please let me know if you have any particular issue that you would like me to focus in on in this way. And I can sort of tie them to my video and tie them to lessons that we create or that I could ask native speakers of other languages to create and put in our library. I always like to leave you with, uh, some relevant videos that you might find interesting related to the topic that I've uh, been discussing. So I suggest you visit uh, a video that I did a while ago, uh, simple tips about, uh, English learning and another one about common mistakes that people have in English, in particular, this issue of interesting, interested and similar, uh, uh situations where I often hear, uh, non-native speakers, uh, saying, you know, I am interesting in music when they mean I'm interested in music. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.